Hello, welcome everyone. I am Kumar and in this session, I will be giving you a quick but impactful introduction to one of the most fundamental topic in the DevNet Associate course that is REST API and Cisco DevNet Sandbox. In the next 15 minutes, we will understand what API are, how REST APIs work, and how Cisco provides a great platform for practicing these skills. So let's start. What is an API? By definition, we call it as application programming interface. It is a, like a messenger between two systems that help them to talk each other. Like in the web application, what we do? We generally click on the web element and we can see all those data in our web application. Is it like that? No. What is happening behind the scene is whenever we are clicking on any of the web element, a API get calls, get method is getting triggered and API is going and talking with the web server that hey I want this kind of data so it is collecting all the data from the web server and later on all those that data are getting displayed on the web UI so let's understand this in a better uh, analogy so suppose you are in a restaurant you you are a customer and you place your order with the waiter right and they deliver it to the kitchen the kitchen prepares your food and the waiter bring back those food to you in this analogy api is a waiter so whatever the things that we are requesting over here API is working on that one and all the material, all the raw material and everything, all the data, everything is present with the web server. In the networking, API allow software to interact with the devices like router, switches and controller. This is the foundation of automation and programmability. So let's talk about basics of REST API. We have two designs to design an API. One is called as REST and another is called as SOAP. SOAP is simple object access protocol and REST is representational state transfer. REST is widely used so we will discuss about REST. REST API uses simple HTTP methods such as GET, POST, PUT and DELETE. We call GET method when we are trying to retrieve some kind of data from the web server. If we want to create any kind of data, a new entry in the web server, we will call the POST method. And when we want to update some kind of data on the web server, suppose my data is uh, uh, wrongly entered, I want to update that one. Then what I will use, I will use put method. And I want to delete my name and data and all my information from the web server, then we will use delete. REST API typically run data in the JSON format, which is actually easy to read and parse using a, any of the programming languages. When we make an API call, we also receive a HTTPS code. Suppose the call that we make, made is successful, then we will get 200 as a response. And if it is not found, we will get 400. And if we will get 401 means we are unauthorized to access that kind of data right so this is an example of an api endpoint so uh, maybe like i should tell you what is the endpoint actually endpoint is a combination of url and uri url is uniform 
resource locator and URI is uniform resource identifier. So here, if you will see in, in this point, we have in this point, we have HTTPS sandbox uh, dnac.cisco.com. This is our URL and URI is DNA forward slash intent forward slash API forward slash V1 network devices. We are querying, we are like actually we are asking for network devices. So this is identifier. This returns a list of network devices from Cisco DNA center sandbox. So now we will jump toward Cisco DevNet sandbox. So here what we are learning, we are learning REST API to get utilized inside the Cisco DevNet sandbox where we will get the hands-on practice with Cisco API. This is the place where we will get the hands-on practice. It's a free online environment provided by Cisco. It includes simulator and even access to live devices and platform like DNA Center, Meraki, WebEx and more. You can use this to practice making API call, build Python script. I will show you uh, in the further slides and even simulate network automation workflow. It's available at developer.cisco.com forward slash sandbox. Okay, as I told, let's jump over to our IDE and we will see how our script looks like when we are using REST and some of the endpoint to retrieve some kind of data, right? So just to save some time, I have already written this script. I will explain you line by line in a better way so that you can get the full understanding of this script. Here in first three line, I have used import request, import JSON and import URL lib3. So these are, these are the library that I have used for writing this script. We can download um, any of the library, whatever we want for our scripting using pip command, right? And uh, in the sixth line, URL live dot disable warning. So what we are doing is we are disabling the warning because this is a learning environment. So it might be possible that the SSL certificate might not be trusted. That's the reason what we are doing is we are disabling the warnings. Here we are using username and password, which is uh, you can say default uh, username and password for DevNet uh, users. And this is the base URL as I explained in the previous uh, slide. So this is our base URL HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash sandbox dnac.cisco.com and here this is the authorization URL that we are preparing. So we are providing the base URL here. We are uh, doing the interpolation here. So base URL will come and sit over here and it will become a full fledged URL and when we are we will call the post method this post method we are calling request dot post auth url so this auth url will come and sit inside this post method along with that we are passing the username and password and this verify false is for certificates okay and now here, what we are trying to do when we will make a post call, we will get a response. When we will get a response, we will check if auth response dot status code, as I told you in the previous slide, whenever we will call 
a rest method like get put post or delete we will get a status code that status code will indicate whether whatever the uh, request that we made is success or not so we are checking over here that if auth response dot status code is equal to 200 means it is success then what we are doing we are taking out the token over here so what this auth response dot json what it will do it will convert the auth response dot json will convert the auth response into the into a dictionary and from the dictionary we will see any of the key is token if like we will have a lot of keys over there so any key is equal to token if it is present it will retrieve the value of that key and it will store it into that particular token that we have defined over here and we have just logged a uh, proper message authentication successful token retrieved and now here we will be creating our header i will i will give you one analogy like how uh, this is happening so you can relate in a better way so we are creating the headers for our final uh, 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 get call that we will make so here x auth token we are providing as token and here we are providing a variable device url equals to and here again we are constructing a proper endpoint so here we are checking for network devices so once we will make a get call request dot get using this device url device url will come and sit inside this uh, method get method as an argument header will come and sit over here as an argument and verify false this is for the certificate uh, we are marking it as false okay so in the same way when this get call will get executed we will get a status code so in the same way we are verifying if the device response dot status code equals to 200 then it will come inside this code block and all the devices whatever the devices that uh, it will return in the json response it will uh, stored over here and what we are doing here we are printing all the json response over here json dot dumps so dump is a function defined inside the json so what is happening is it is it is converting into a string it is converting into a string and indentation is two means it will um, it will print that json response in a better way so that we can uh, see and read it clearly as here you can see i have given the else uh, block also for uh, proper logging uh, statement fail to retrieve uh, the devices so it will come in this way and here for this if i have defined else over here so when we will uh, run this script through our ide terminal we will be able to see what is the output of this one so here if you will see we got the statement printed over here authentication successful token retrieved so once the token retrieved we put that token into the header and the new uh, endpoint that we were having we executed the get method along with that endpoint and we got these many response these are the json response it looks similar but uh, these data are different the mac address are different the ide are different so see a lot of data are present over here so this is the json format response that we are getting from this script so just to provide the clarity like okay we have a different device option over here i have uh, written another script this is the script and uh, in the same way i have written i have i am just taking the token i am uh, i am creating the header using that token and after that just one for loop i have uh, added over here so what is happening is all the 
response in the string format is getting stored in this device so i'm just running a for loop device in devices device in devices so printf whatever the host name is there whatever the ip address whatever the mac address whatever the serial number it will print so let's uh, run it we will see what it is printing So now here, if you will see, we have network devices, host name, different IP addresses and MAC addresses, serial number, all the details are getting printed. So now I will make you understand like how it is happening. So suppose um, your friend went outside somewhere like uh, in uh, he went to USA. He he told that, OK, I have spoken to the security guard. You go and uh, collect the key but you have to tell him your name and your age i have communicated to the security guard that if any person comes and he is uh, say, uh, he is conveying you about uh, his name and his age then you can give the key of the house to him so how it is happening so this is the house this is the house and this is the area which is surrounded by a big wall and and here is the security guard and when a person comes when a person come he communicated to the security guard that my name is this one and my age is this one then what this security guard did he will he will give the key to your friend means in the same way what we are doing is we are we are providing our username and password and in the return we are getting token so in the same way here in the return we are getting the keys here in the return we are getting the keys so using this key anybody can come over here your friend will unlock your home and he will get inside he will get inside your home so this key is the actual token this token that we are passing over here so if we need some kind of information from the web server we we have to get the authorization right that okay we need some information when we will provide this token then the authorization will be successful and we will get the information that we are looking for okay so i hope uh, this is uh, clear to you guys and uh, now yeah this is this is the uh, developer.cisco.com uh, side sandbox and when you will uh, when you will create account you will uh, see this kind of page and when you will click on the launch sandbox uh, this kind of ui you will be able to see right so i have done with the demo and uh, in this one yes so demo is done so now what we can say at last we can say that rest api are the real game changer in the networking world they enable the automation programmability and smart infrastructure management cisco devnet sandbox it's really a great tool gives learner a safe space to build and test their skills right and mastering this topic is a vital step toward uh, becoming uh, a devnet associate and more importantly i would like to say that a modern network engineer so you can ask me like whatever the if you have any doubt or question thank you very much for your time